As you just mentioned, Bill, the uncommitted vote in Michigan could be a warning sign for President Biden's re-election campaign. Let's bring in Mark Thiessen now. Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Should this be a warning sign for the president? Good to be with you. It is, and it's not just the uncommitted vote, it's the overall vote. He lost 19% uh, of Michigan Democrats. And to put that number in perspective, that's 144,000 votes. That's within less than 10,000 votes of his entire margin of victory in 2020. Um, and that's just Democrats. That's not in counting in, in, uh, independent swing voters uh, who, who might also not vote for him. So he, he's perilously close to, uh, to his margin of, of victory, of losing his margin of victory in 2020. Now, as Bill said uh, before, we don't know what those voters are going to do. They might stay home. They might vote for Trump. They might come back home to Biden, some of them. But, it, but, he's, but he's weak. Um, and, and Michigan is, is the weakest state for him. Uh, very interesting that immigration is um, solidly... Uh, it is now solidly at the top of, of most American voters, um, you know, list as the most pressing issues facing the country today, that now we've just got this announcement the president's going to be making some sort of speech from the White House at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time today on, on public safety and uh, our communities and making them more safe. This is obviously becoming a bigger and bigger issue for this president, Mark. No, it's leapfrog the uh, the the uh, as the, the inflation in the economy is the number one issue for the country, and and that's thanks to governors like Greg Abbott who nationalized the issue by making by making sure these Demo these migrants weren't only in 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 Texas, but they were spread out to all over the country, including Democratic states. But here's the thing that I don't understand, and the Democrats can't seem to come up with a good answer for. Democrats know that in 2016 Donald Trump won the presidency on the issue of illegal immigration. So why, after beating him in 2020 and taking back the White House, did they then turn around and unleash the worst border crisis in American history? I mean, it's almost like they're trying to pave the way for Donald Trump to come back into the White House. So, you know, Biden has broken the record every single year uh, for, the, for the most encounters at the southern border. He broke it in 2021. He broke it in 2022. He broke it in 2023. And now in 2024, he's finally taking executive action to do something about it, it's a little bit late, and I don't think it's going to work. I um, want to ask you about the ongoing controversy uh, at Google with the CEO calling yeah. the biased AI chatbot responses unacceptable. Um, you've, you've got these questions that are going to these chatbots that are coming up with, I don't know, a, a black George Washington. Um, he has, I'll paraphrase, written an email to employees calling uh, the chatbot responses unacceptable. Uh, we'll see what happens there. This while Megan McArdle has penned an op-ed in the Washington Post saying Gemini appears to have been programmed to avoid offending the leftmost 5% of the U.S. population at the price of offending the rightmost 50% mark. It calls management's basic competency into question and raises frightening questions about how the same folks have been shaping our information environment. Where does this go, Mark? Yeah. Well, she, she hit the nail on the head. And look, here's the thing. Right now, it's laughable that the, the Google AI is giving us like a woman pope uh, and, and can't tell the difference whether Hitler or Elon Musk has, has been more negatively affecting society. These, these are almost caricatures of, of liberal bias. But the problem is, this, this is, this is early launch. A, the AI is going to get better, but the bias will still be there because the people who are programming it are, are Silicon Valley tech bros, who are the most woke population in the entire country. And so the bias will remain, it'll be better, but it'll just be let more subtle. And it won't be as obvious and it won't be as laughable. And it's going and the problem with it is is in our kids are going to in the future are not going to be learning history from from history books. They're going to be learning it from AI. They're going to be asking if you're going to have an AI tutor in your home and the kids are just going to ask it questions and it's going to give the answers. And if it's this biased, it's going to infect an entire generation of kids with this woke mind virus. And so the left's campaign to take over the schools, it doesn't matter if they control the schools, if they control AI AI. They can affect the entire worldview of an entire generation of kids with yeah. this bias, and it'll be better, it'll be more subtle and less obvious uh, as it gets as it improves. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal writing about Google's reputational headache this morning. It is a big one. Mark, thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.